It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the program. With me in the KFG studios, special guest today as well, but my colleagues and business partners, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Yeah, we are excited about today's program. We do have a special guest on the show with us today. CFP Greg Fuhrer is here to help us discuss how to have clarity in your entire financial life and use that clear picture to plan and achieve your biggest financial goals. We're covering that and more on this episode of Wise Money. That's right. We've got a lot of questions for Greg. All right. If you have questions for the show, continue to send those over. You can do so several different ways. You can call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Online, wisemoneyshow.com. You can get a whole bunch of additional content there, but also submit questions right there on the right. Most engagement, though, comes through social media, the YouTube channel, but Facebook as well. Wherever you're at, we are there as well. Just search The Wise Money Show. All right, so here's the deal. All right, The the Wise Money Show is a show about financial planning. And when you have an accurate view of, you know, different pieces of your financial life, but they're decentralized because, of course, they are, it's hard to build accurate plans because it's decentralized. If you try to centralize everything together, likely you don't have updated data. And so, yeah, you could build a good plan, but it's not going to be accurate because it's outdated. We're going to untie that pretzel today with Greg and uh, talk through his planning process, the overall comprehensive financial planning process, and help you take a, a, a more proactive and accurate look at building financial plans. Greg, welcome to the show. Why don't you start with just a brief intro, who you are, your firm, maybe where you're from. Absolutely. First off, thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor to be on this show. I've seen your show before. You guys put out great content, so thank you for doing that in your community. I love one of the visions you guys talk about through this show is to make your community one of the most financial literate communities in America, and I think that's just something. ratio. Well, ratio. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> something we're going to try to compete you. But uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a Pittsburgher. Uh, if I have a thick <laughs> accent, I apologize for that. And what we call Yinzer out in Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm a huge Steelers fan. That's the question I always get when I'm out in the Midwest. Are you a Steelers fan? We do have other teams in Pittsburgh, believe it or not. But uh, I run a financial planning firm called Baratung Advisors. And Baratung is a German word that I pronounce incorrectly because uh, my <laughs> Pittsburgh accent. But it's a German word for advice, guidance, and counsel. And uh, so we're a small financial planning firm. And we're just trying to do the same thing that you guys are doing to try to build our community up through financial planning. We That's believe the awesome. number one reason for stress, the number one reason for divorce, and the number one reason for suicide in our country are money issues. So mm. if we can work together through financial planning, we can truly change lives and have a ripple effect. And that's what we're trying to do, just Come like on. yourself. So it's, it's awesome. a pleasure to be here. High hey, calling there. That's it, good. Isn't that crazy? And those uh, you know, those of you fans, regular listeners to the Wise Money Show, you just you you can hear, yeah, he's got a little accent, but that's it's the same message. And so we met Greg recently, and I'll explain a little bit more of that later, but we have the same heartbeat, and that is everyone needs comprehensive financial planning. And so, Greg, where does that conviction come from? And and, and Kevin, Josh, let's chime in as well. But I, I, I guess let's start with you, Greg. I mean, the conviction that everyone needs financial planning, everyone needs a financial plan, where's that rooted? How, speak to that a little bit. Yeah, so I think that uh, every single person, whether you have it or not, has to deal with money, right? There's things that are different about all of us, but one of the things – whether it's currency that we deal with here in America or currency somewhere else in the world or you're trading chickens. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's currency, it's money. And then the Bible talks about money more than most issues. Mm-hmm. So it's a really, really important thing. But what we tend to do is we don't deal with it. And we're drifting through life without a plan. And we wonder how we end up someplace. And so really what to me what financial planning is, is taking two things, your resources or money, whatever we want to call it, whatever it's chickens or money, it's resources, mm-hmm. And your values, or we like to call it our calling, right? When you take those two things and you put them together, that's really what a plan is. It's not this tangible thing that there's a certain defined process. We do a very similar process, all of us. But it's as simple as that is, what do you want to end up with your money? And are you doing the things in that process? So the example I always like to use, I want to lose weight. I have a little bit overweight. I got some COVID pounds. I think we all do. (laughs) I want to do that. But am I changing my actions? Am I actually doing stuff or am I okay with where I'm at? Mm -hmm. And right now I'm trying to change my actions to do that. But if I don't have a plan 
and I'm just going through each day and I'm just eating my cheeseburger without deciding how that affects the long term, I'm going to end up a place I didn't intend to. And so I think that that's where the conviction for financial planning is. Every person I've ever met, if I ask them where they want to be in 10 or 15 years, it might take them 20 minutes, might take them five seconds, but they could give me that answer. But the second question, are you doing anything to get you to that place? Are you doing the right things even? Mm -hmm. So if you think about this funnel and, and on the, on the far end, you've got your results, your outcome. Where do your results come from? The middle, that's your behaviors, that's your actions. Greg's talking about that. Now, at the beginning of the funnel, those often your thinking and, and, and it's your beliefs. And so that's really part of the value, one of the major values that your certified financial planner is going to bring. And hopefully we're bringing to you here and that, that the belief that all six areas of your financial life really need to be integrated for you to make great decisions and take the right action to get the right outcomes. Yeah, and, and that belief and that thinking pattern or that model for how you approach your financial decisions, that may not have been given to you in the house that you grew up in. Yep. I, I can about guarantee it wasn't discussed in the schools you came through. You may not have even, if you went to college, you may not have even ever taken a course where they even discuss this stuff. And so how do you go through life trying to achieve really great, important things in your financial life where it's never been modeled for you, it's never been taught to you, you don't have a game plan. And that is part of the reason why certified financial planners exist, right? It's yeah. it's to step in and fill that gap and provide uh, advice and a, a way of thinking that maybe has never been taught to you before. Kevin, where, where does that... Like the root belief that everyone needs a financial plan. I'd speak to that. Where is that? Where where is that rooted for you? So that came out of my the very beginning of my career because I started with a large nationwide company, and what they did is we did financial planning for a, a small fee, and then um, you can obviously see everything about someone's financial life. And then the idea was to sell products that were manufactured by the same company. And whether these products were the best products or the best for the client or not. And that internally, I couldn't, I couldn't take that conflict, but I realized I loved financial planning because when you could, when you could show someone, and this is why I, I love people like you do a radio show about financial planning. Yes. Financial planning, because if you have great information, you can make great decisions. Mm -hmm. So we're talking, what, what, what Greg is talking about is, hey, I know I need to lose a few pounds. How does he know? He knows that. So the question is, am I willing to forego a, a current pleasure mm -hmm. for my future well-being? And so it's that it's easier with a you know with you know I put on a few extra pounds so I can't see my tennis shoes anymore I can't you know I can't bend over and, and you're not wearing shoes today Kevin I actually <laughs> wanted to tell you that I wasn't sure if that was on purpose I was wondering I couldn't remember. so uh, so then you say okay uh, or, or you know I I can't you know everything's uncomfortable I so you can you can know that it's easier to know that as it relates to your body and things like that but with your finances. People don't know, and so they, they, they're lacking clarity and confidence. So if you said, okay, what, what, are people, what do people need? They need financial planning. And, but when you tell someone, hey, I do financial planning, what do they hear you say? Ma, 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 ma. No, 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 <laughs> no. This is what they hear you say. I sell investments yeah. to people. Yeah. And yeah. you say, I do financial planning. Oh, you sell investments to people. No, I do financial planning. Oh, oh you mean, no, no, no. Financial planning. So that's why we love getting the good word out. Yeah. That's it's right. so interesting. That's that's a great segue. We're going to hit it in the next segment here. Uh, Greg, we were talking yesterday. Greg came out, spoke to the uh, entire wealth management team at Corhorn Financial Group, and he talked about a few distinctions that he uses litmus tests to see, <laughs> okay, is this financial professional, air quotes, a, a doing comprehensive financial planning or not. So we're going to get into those. And then also, how do you get that accurate data to build great financial plans? We've got that more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show. What you're watching right now is our weekly one-hour talk show that airs right here on this channel, 10 a.m. Eastern time, every Saturday morning, every Saturday morning, also on podcasts, same time as well. It's an hour because it also airs on a few different radio stations locally where we are headquartered. If you aren't into full one-hour content, if that's too long for you, I get that. And so we've got all sorts of other content that airs right here on this channel. 
every weekday, eight to 10 minutes, next wise step videos that take one financial concept, uh, concept, apply it directly to your financial life. I'm just gonna forewarn you. One of the first ones we did was how to prepare for a recession and presto, six months later, we had a recession. Just recently did another, another, a redo of that, how to prepare for a recession or how to inflation proof your life or how do you invest during volatile market. So if that sounds like something that would be beneficial to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. And if you like the content, like the content, leave comments as well. Thank you. That's, that's inspiring. Um, maybe we should do a show how to prepare for a national championship football season for Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. In, in Greg's uh, intro, he didn't talk about his, fan, his college fandom there. But if we do a show about how to prepare for it and it shows up six months later, I mean, that's it's right, yeah. we're, we're due to. So we did. So, so Greg, one of the jokes, uh, one of the early fans of the Wise Money Show was uh, – old Notre Dame quarterback, now assistant coach. And so he plans, they, they plan a workshop for the football team every summer. Um, and they invited us to come speak to the team. And so that was a pretty cool, cool experience. And if you're not a Notre Dame fan, you go do that, you will be. Um, and no coincidence, they made it to the national championship game that <laughs> year. I believe it was because of our talk, our motivation. Oh, no I'm doubt. Sure. It was, no, yeah. But they, I mean, it, it, it was... It does. It gives you goosebumps because they are invested in these kids, and it, yeah. you know it's their. They call it four for forty. So like you're there for four years, but they want you prepared for the next forty. And That's so cool program. Yeah, pretty yeah. cool. I did have to admit, I appreciate. It. I saw in your steps. You had to play like a champion today. Yeah. And one of the things <laughs> in our church we have, like right before you get up to the altar. Uh, our pastor has worship like a champion today. Oh, love so, it. He's not a Notre Dame fan. It's just he loves it. And so, like, anyone that's assisting, everyone just slaps like Notre Dame. Uh, so I do have to cool. admit that's a great tradition. <laughs> yeah, good. We All right. Made to do that. We're going to start with that litmus <laughs> test. But specifically, you know, the one that you started with was, well, do does your financial planner talk about and review your home and auto insurance? And so feel free to share the tree story or or, or whatever. Yeah. That, that would be great. And then we'll take that into how you – yeah, anyway, we'll we'll just launch off of that. Wait. So, so um e, e uh e money wealth vision when do when are we going to That's going to be next. And now I have it teased out. I didn't know if we want to talk about that specific tool, but basically, how do you get accurate client how do you get yeah, accurate okay. data to plan yeah. off of? Cuz I do can, I do think at some point that'll be the second the, question. The I don't, I don't know if we save this to the fourth segment, but uh, I mean to tell the story, like Greg is here to train our team. Like we do t technical training, which is not sales training, right? Mm -hmm. And and, and mm -hmm. it's, it's good. I mean, that can come out here. Uh, that's where I actually had that. Okay. It's coming out here. But I want to hit the... Uh, Just steer us. You know where we're going. Yeah. All right. Greg, can you actually put the microphone just a little bit closer? What? <laughs> We're gonna do We're this all over the place. Here. Every segment, <laughs> I <laughs> will push it. You were saying, uh, can you go to the left just a little? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's joking. He's joking. Uh, but you were saying like you could hear it here. Yeah. And like I can't. So like when I'm doing this, you can't hear yourself. Oh, I mean, I can hear myself, but like I can't tell what's crisp audio oh, and what's no. not. Yeah, like I'm not no wired idea. that way. Like and so oh. it's just I always love it when I'm doing some of these things and like the guy that does this free will and he'll be like, yeah, I, I can't hear you well. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, are you, like well, and so I just. I can't, like I can hear myself, but I can't tell the difference. Like, like the back here now, I can kind of yeah. think, here yeah. versus here sounds the same to me. Yeah, yeah. you sound great. Uh, you sound yeah. great. Uh, we'll have you singing later. So you just you give me a little whatever. I'll pay attention. <laughs> All right, here we I'm go. I'm trainable. All right. Um. In order to build effective, great financial plans, you need great data, accurate data. We're going to talk about how you can get that, how you can overcome the obstacles to having great data to plan off of that and more. Right now, this is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory, special guest Greg Fuhrer as well. Stay up to date on all Wise Money content. Find us online, wisemoneyshow.com, and then all of our social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. Just search the Wise Money Show. Okay, so we all love financial planning. We believe in financial planning. The Wise Money Show is about uh, making sure that you're aware you should be taking a comprehensive approach to all six areas of your financial life. That's how you can make how, that's how you can distinguish good choices from great choices, right? And um, and then those great outcomes. 
Greg, you mentioned yesterday as you were working with our team that one of the distinctions that stands out to you as a litmus test between a financial professional that's just uh, selling investments or maybe narrow focused to one that's doing actual comprehensive financial planning is that the one that's doing comprehensive financial planning will review and talk to you about your home and auto insurance. I, we find that interesting. We believe that wholeheartedly. We, we have a home and auto insurance team at, at KFG. Why do you believe that? Or maybe uh, share a story or two that kind of reveals that. Yeah, and just to give our listeners a little bit of context around this, this is a question I always like to, anytime I get in front of another CFP professional, because we see so many people out there that call themselves a financial planner. They might not be a CFP professional. They might be somebody that just graduated college and doesn't have any licenses or any designations, and they can call themselves a financial planner. I'm going to be out in D.C. next week fighting for the rights of financial planners because we need to have a designation out there. But it goes further than designation because people can say, and I have people that are other friends that are financial planners, and they say they do financial planning. But is it comprehensive financial planning? Are they following the seven steps of a CFP? So Kevin and I were talking about there's a litmus test. And I have a couple of them. My favorite one is always, do you look at a client's home and auto? And usually the response I get back from advisors is, I'm not a licensed property and casualty agent. And I said, neither am I. (laughs) <laughs> but some people are and some people aren't. You can be a CFP and be a licensed property casualty, but most of us aren't. And they say, well, well, I'm not qualified to talk about this. And I sit there and talk about what could destroy a client's financial plan. And when most people, what keeps them up at night that might destroy their financial plan, it's usually one of three things. It's usually an early death or we like to call it premature death. I know it's kind of too academic sometimes, but somebody dies early, right? We all know somebody that does that. The other thing is market downturns. That's what keeps clients up at night. It doesn't keep me up at night. We know they're going to happen. We're prepared for them. Mm-hmm. But the other one has always been inflation, not just because we have high inflation now. But those, those are to be the three things I've found over my career that people are naturally are worried about their financial plan. Well, the chances of dying at an early age is very rare. Yeah, we might know one or two people in our lives or, or, that have died early, but most of us don't. And the probabilities are just very, very low. But the two probabilities that are greater, one is a long-term disability nobody ever pays attention to, but the other one is getting sued in your vehicle. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're inundated with billboards of lawyers, and no offense to per, uh, personal injury lawyers because there's a lot of great ones out there and they need to exist, but a lot of times they're called ambulance-chasing lawyers, right? They're going after the ambulance to get a payout. And again, a lot of great personal injury lawyers, a lot of great believers that are personal injury lawyers, they need to exist. But what ends up happening, it can destroy your financial plan. And I don't know if any of you are listening to this, maybe you have a 16-year-old or 17-year-old that just got behind the wheel. Mm. But 16-year-old mm. Greg Fear was not the best driver. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a brand new vehicle. It was a company car. And the first week I took it off roadie there was a GMC Envoy. Mm. I saw commercials. I thought I could take it off roadie That was actually a church camp. I was a counselor at church camp, and I took it off the roads. I bent the frame going off a jump. Oh, wow. I just I thought the vehicle could do that, right? So the, Dukes it, of Hazard did it. That's, that's right. right. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was in the General Lee. I mean, I thought I could do it. I did try to hop through the window one time. It didn't work. But, <laughs> but I mean, it, it, a week later, I was in a car accident. Oh, my. And then uh, a couple months later, I, I ran into a um, – it was a foggy night, and I ran into a uh, guardrail. Those things happen, and I, it keeps me up sometimes at night. My daughter's only about to be four, and I think about when she gets her driver's license every time I see a young kid. So your, your kid's out there, and they're making the mistakes we all made. But it's that one mistake that changes their lives. Mm. They reckon to somebody, and they end somebody else's life, and we know how precious life is. Mm. And now all of a sudden, there's a huge lawsuit. Yeah. You were worried about the markets destroying your portfolio. You were worried about inflation destroying your portfolio. How about when you owe, uh, with a human life value, maybe $10 million? Or the other one, you have a friend over, and they're hanging out at your pool. And there's an accident that happens to your pool. And I can go on and on. And my favorite story that I have to share with you guys, and I again, we talk about how often this happens. I have about 30 of these I can tell from my own clients. That have uh, happened, of course, yeah. Right? Yeah. But mm-hmm. my favorite one is I was out on, I'm a, a big boater. I'm out on a boat. And so usually when I'm family time, I don't answer my phone. But every once in a while, you ever get that phone call and you get a gut feeling it probably needs answered? So I have Tony Brothers from college. He doesn't really call me that often. And I'm like, I got to answer this. So I answer it. And he goes, hey, Greg, how do I hide money? Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you think I do for a living? He's like, that's what you do. You hide money for wealthy people, right? I said, no, I'm a financial planner. But he's, I guess, watch too much TV shows. Then I ask him the question, wait, why are you asking me this? Yeah. What did you do, right? So long story short, 
He ends up telling me that he had a tree on his property. It's not a weepy willow. It's something like that that goes after the water lines. They had to get it cut down. And uh, just like the government, he took the lowest bidder and uh, didn't take the, the bidder that did it right, but the lowest bidder. So he's got his guys coming down to cut down a tree, and he decided to take the day off of work, but took his son uh, to school late that day and, and recorded it. Guys up there cut a tree. Every other company came with a boom box. This guy did. He climbed a tree. Well, the guy's cutting down a branch. Branch has full water. Hits an electric line. The guy falls dead out of the tree. Let's get past the fact that his son is traumatized watching this. Mm-hmm. He gets sued. Uh, the widow uh, of the guy cut the tree, sued the tree company that he was working for, and also sued the homeowner. Uh, you might think you don't have liability there, but that's up to the courts. A lot of times a lawsuit can be just as damaging as the actual end result. That's right. Um, and so he was meeting with his property cash agent and pretty much said that uh, you'll have $100,000 in liability and you're going to lose all your assets. Uh, the the company's going to settle. They're, they don't want to do anything to get involved $100,000. Luckily, he was recording it. It was actually admissible in the courts. Uh, in, the, in the recording, he happily asked the guy, hey, why are you not using a boom truck when everyone else did? And the guy essentially was telling him as a professional that he knew what he was doing. And, and, and the guy wasn't. But he would have lost a lot of money over that. And how do you recover from that? So I believe we have an obligation as financial planners when we're quarterbacking a client's life. We're looking at everything. We can't see everything, right? Risk, if you could quantify risk, that means you know what it is. Risks, if we could predict them, they're not a risk. Yeah. But what we can do, there's risks out there that we know could happen and take reasonable steps. So we believe everyone had, that I've met has an auto policy and a homeowner's policy. I know there's not people out there. So if everyone has it, just like everyone deals with money, and it could protect you from well-known risks out there, why are we not helping our clients to structure that correctly? And not only that, mm-hmm. but you're, when you go to somebody to get your home an auto, they typically don't see all your assets. They don't see your balance sheet. They don't see your income statement. So how do they give you advice on how much coverage you need? Yeah, I think the overall job of a financial planner, if you said the, the kind of the umbrella over everything, what is it? It's to be a risk manager. Yeah, mm-hmm. And so you help, because some risks are known and some risks are unknown. The known ones, you can you have a choice. You can live with the risk or you can transfer the risk. If you write a check to the insurance company, now they're on risk for something that you would have been on risk for. Mm-hmm. And that and, and so navigating the whole insurance piece can be complicated. And a lot of times we'll just I'll just ask folks, "Hey, you know, you're you're worth 5 million dollars. Does your insurance agent have any idea what your net worth is?" Yeah. And they look at me and say, "No, I haven't I haven't talked to him in 11 years. Or mm-hmm. they might say, well, yeah, I've got this umbrella policy. Well, the umbrella policy was helpful because it was a million dollars. But now your assets have grown far beyond that. And, and your 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 insurance hasn't caught up with or isn't staying current with your overall financial life. That's a great segue. That's where we want to go next. How do you make sure that you have accurate data and the right data to, gr- to create great financial plans? That and more coming up on The Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Time flies, especially mm-hmm. when there's four of us. So, yep. I know that it's that, just motoring. Yeah, it's hard to get a word in edgewise. That's all right. Sometimes when I'm in the car by myself, it's hard to get a word in edgewise. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> keep interrupting yourself with these extra. Okay, so we'll kick this segment off with. Uh, well, Kevin, why don't you why don't you say why Greg was here? Okay, and then we can get into okay what. Um, What's the right process for, or the right way to gather all the accurate information, the right information? And Kevin, you can just steer it. You can take it to whether you want to talk about e-money specifically or whatever, and we can talk about that whole process of. Uh, I it was akin. I put it in here from yesterday's example, Greg, about the Tupperware story or the junk drawer or whatever. But basically, how mm-hmm. your certified financial planner should be, you know, organizing your entire financial life and making sure it's accurate so that you can build great plans yep. and have clarity. Cause this, is, this will be a, I believe uh, I'm a little biased, but I think it should be a great show for our, the folks that are listening, but also for team members. For, yep. yep. Um, okay. All right. <clears throat> How do you make sure that your financial life is always decisionable is what, is what we say around here. It's, it's up to date and you have 
clarity on where everything is, decisionable. We're helping you with that right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregory, and special guest Greg Fuhr. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on the YouTube channel. Go check it out. Go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, subscribe to it there, turn on notifications. We push a lot of content, not just this talk show there. Uh, so turn on notifications so you're made aware every time we drop new content and leave questions there as well. Get a lot of questions through the YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're talking about uh, the importance of comprehensive financial planning, but the that's only, and Kevin, you mentioned this right as we started the show, that's only as good as the data that you have, right? If right. you've got good data, you can build great plans. If you don't have good data or it's not complete, well, garbage in, garbage out. So, Kevin, share a little bit about why Greg came out to visit KFG, and then we'll talk about how you can get good data and build great plans off of it. Okay. Um, I will use my penchant for uh, taking a short story and making it long. You've already made it too long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shoot. I don't know okay. anyone like that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we used, back in the day, we used Lotus 1, 2, 3, we we actually there was a there was a, a program before that and then we we reverse engineered that to create a, a financial plan in Lotus One Two Three. Then we went to Excel. the The problem with use, doing financial planning on spreadsheets is if you if you're saying garbage in garbage out, it's easy to screw up a spreadsheet. It's easy to get a, a an outcome that might look really good, but it's wrong. And if you if you're not a wizard, you don't know what you're doing. So let me back up just a second. And so essentially what we were doing to 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 go to what I was sharing, that we were working with clients just like you, gathering their financial information that's decentralized. You've got a 401k over there. you got a Roth IRA. You've got a bank account, a loan over here, blah, blah, blah. Grabbing all that information and compiling it manually into an Excel sheet, okay? And uh, we had a few different iterations, but they had limitations because number one, you're doing it manually and, and you're prone to error. But number two, it didn't have all of the uh, well, Monte Carlo, some of the other analyses that can be done with, with more sophisticated software. So we wanted th these things to be built in. And we were, um, our, our community is underserved as it relates to financial services. There are not enough financial planners to do the financial planning work that needs to be done. So we're saying, all right, how do we do it in a way and have a great tool that can really, really help us, and it's pleasing to our clients, but we we can actually get the tool to do what it needs to do to serve our clients. And we were first exposed to this at the FPA conference, Financial Planning Association conference, in 2007 in San Diego. And there's a, the, the, the engine behind what we call Wealth Vision 360, the engine behind that's called eMoney. And so we saw eMoney in 2007. I said, oh, man, this is perfect. And then I finally got up to talk to one of the representatives of the product, and I found out about the pricing, and I thought, oh, it's perfect for someone else, not us. <laughs> and then in 2009, I, I, uh, an email came across. They totally changed their pricing structure. And in 2009, uh, this was early 2009, we were suffering mentally, physically, emotionally in many different ways because our clients were. Um, and and the the carnage that they'd seen in the stock market, but in in you know people losing jobs, uh, businesses closing down uh, in the RV industry. Um, I remember people saying, you know, the RV industry is never going to recover from this. And then I remember people saying, hey, back in the early '70s, it looked just like this. We'll come back again someday. So um, in 2009, we had the opportunity to get started with e money, and we've been using e money ever since. And I would say we're um, we're a power user of eMoney because it gives our it equips our clients with the tools that they need if they want 27 access to their entire financial life they've got it. Some folks want that. Some folks want to look at it, uh, you know, twice a year before they come in and sit down with us and discuss things. So it depends. In in so there's a broad spectrum of what people want. Uh, our clients want and want to see, but for us behind the scenes. For us to give great advice when a client comes in and says, hey, uh, buy a new car for my child, what account should I take the money from? Well, if, if it used to be, okay, give me an afternoon to assemble all the data and I'll get back to you. And now we can just look and say, hey, 
this is the account that you should take it from um, because there's a, uh, you know, we can do some tax loss harvesting. We can do this, that, or the other thing. So it's powerful, powerful software, but it's only, it's only, it's only powerful if you know how to use it. Mm-hmm. And this is where um, one of the amazing financial planners on our team, Janelle, one day put in uh, the Slack channel, hey, you got to check out these videos. Mm. And they were by a, a guy named Greg Fuhrer <laughs> with Baritung Advisors out of Pittsburgh. And so I said, okay, um, I got to talk to this guy. So I think I emailed Greg and we set up a time to talk and we talked and I said, Greg, you got to come and talk to my team because your your ability to make this tool be even more amazing for clients is what we need. And so um, the rest is history. We spent a day yesterday, um, I think we probably had about 25 folks in the room, learning how to use this tool even more effectively for our clients. Yeah, Greg has now his e-money tip of the week, which Greg, you can speak to as well, but also share a little bit about your perspective of why using a tool like e-money, why it's so beneficial for building financial plans, accurate financial plans. Absolutely. So we talked about litmus tests. Yeah. And one of the ones I didn't share with you guys yesterday is a litmus test is what financial planning software you use. And I don't care which one it is. I, I personally use eMoney. I think it's the best tool. It's not perfect. It's just the best I've found. Um, but whenever they give me their answer, I say, how much time do you spend learning how to use the software? You look at the great athletes, and it pains me to use this name, but Tom Brady is considered the greatest quarterback. <laughs> uh, as a Steelers fan, it's really, really hard to say. He's pretty good. But he's also known to be, by most people, the hardest working athlete in the entire NFL. And Peyton Manning was the same way he played for the Colts. And you look at these great athletes, Michael Jordan, the, the, the once-in-a-generation athletes don't just have God-given talent. They practice at that talent. And I, I might sound rude here for a second, but I think it's embarrassing if you're a financial planner for a living and you don't try to hone your craft, Yeah. Mm-hmm. right? Like you mm-hmm. don't try to get better at it. And, and so the fact that you guys brought me out here to teach your team to be the best, that's why you guys are going to get to that vision of making this the most literate community in the United States because you, it's, the tool is only as good as you use it. Right? I can give That's you a exactly shovel. Right. Yep. I'd never see a shovel dig a ditch by itself. <laughs> right? And I can tell you what, if you give me a shovel, I probably can't dig a good ditch. <laughs> right? So that's what that tool is. And so, and why we love this tool, by the way, it, it, and one of the things I always talk about, it's like for most people's financial lives, we're busy. Mm-hmm. Right? Where maybe you're taking grandchildren or your children to soccer practice or football practice or whatever it might be. You have the day to day life. And part of what we talked about earlier, why people are drifting through their financial life is we're busy. Right? We're in a busy society. We, we, we should change that, but right now we're in a busy society. So your financial life, you, you, know, you leave a job, and you had a 401k and you were contributing to it, and you get your next job, you forget about that. Yeah. And that's okay. You're like It's not a problem. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, do, do I still have money over there? How much? Where's my financial picture at? So this, I always like to kin it to a junk drawer. So we have a junk drawer at home. And it's filled with a lot of, you know, bare tongue stuff in it and, uh, you know, and a candle lighter. And my wife's always looking for the candle lighter and can't find it, right? And she ends up jumping out the junk drawer. And then she goes ahead and puts everything back in. She says, it's going to be organized. Finally. We're not going to let it get that way. And it gets that way again because we're busy. And that's how most people's financial lives are. We are literally busy. Yeah. And we put it all together. We spend all this time with the financial planner. And once we get it all together... Two years later, it's chunked up. What e-money allows our clients to do and what it allows to do for your clients is once you put that hard work in to keep it organized to create mm-hmm. that clarity. Yeah, that's that, great. That's, that's exactly right. All right. So with that clear picture, how do you build the plans? What adjustments are you making right now to your plan because of what's going on in the economy and the markets? We've got that more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. All right. You'll have to cut that in. Yeah. All right. So we've got one, uh, one of the radio stations. Um only has a half hour block, so we do three segments for them. That's why the mm-hmm. time minutes are. Awesome. Is that going to change? Uh, no, it's not. Okay, All right, just so, checking. Um, yeah, good stuff. Okay, so now four segment land on the plane. We got thirteen minutes. We'll just we'll. I, to me, I'm curious. Then from that, um, and this can really just be ad lib. So Josh, Kevin, as well, like we can take this wherever we want to go. But 
as you have that accurate data, are you changing anything with inflation assumptions? We touched a little bit on this yesterday. Are you changing anything with capital market assumptions? Or what do you do when clients come in and, hey, my financial, my, my, my plan had a confidence rate that I liked, and now it has a confidence rate that I don't like. Um, and so that and, well, anything connected to that we'll hit in this last segment. Sound good? Yeah. That one? All right. All right. So last segment. All right. With inflation at 40-year highs, with the market, you know, struggling this year, how has that influenced your retirement plan, your overall financial plan, and do you need to make any changes? We're talking about that right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name's Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregory, and special guest Greg Fuhrer. Every episode of the Wise Money Shows on podcast. So as you're running around this summer, whatever, throw the the headphones in and go to wherever you listen podcasts. Search the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. And do me a favor, subscribe to it there or follow us, whatever you need to do on that platform. And then rate the program. Rate the program. That is helpful, helpful feedback for us, but also helps other folks that are looking for content on wise financial principles to find us as well. So uh, we appreciate that. All right, so we just talked about, I mean, gosh, Greg, you, you nailed it. I mean, it's, it's, I would argue it's impossible to create an accurate, helpful financial plan if you don't have all of the right data and if you don't have it all organized correctly. And a financial planning, a, a certified financial planner that's doing comprehensive financial planning should be using a software to help with that. You said exactly what we say, Greg, e-money isn't perfect, but it's the best one that we found, and that's why we use it. Now, we're we're agnostic, so I we could change that tomorrow. I have no idea. Um, Kevin wants to create K-Money, uh, so he's talked about that for, <laughs> a, long, for a long time. Uh, we need to collaborate after this. Yeah, <laughs> so, but right now, E-Money e is, is the best. That's, that's what we use, and that's what helps your financial life be decisionable at all times. Let me tell you a quick story. So at the beginning of the pandemic, and that, well, wait a second, going through the pandemic, it has to be the most difficult. Yeah, retailers and so on. Yes, but the two careers that I would say really took it on the chin during the pandemic, teachers and HR professionals. Oh, can we just say a prayer for them? That is just that's an awful group. Well, I had a teacher reach out um, later in the pandemic. It's probably, oh, yeah, it was going back to school. It was August. She reached out and said, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I feel comfortable going back to school. She wasn't. We were planning on her retiring two years later. And she asked the question that you've probably wondered as well. Could I retire now? I, I'm not sure I feel comfortable. Lots of change. I'm going to have to do it virtual. When the kids come back, I don't even know if I feel safe, blah, blah, blah. Can I be done now? I had an answer to her within 15 minutes because her and her husband's financial life was decisionable. Their bank accounts, they didn't have any loans, thankfully. We'd been preparing and, and everything was connected within their financial plan, the e-money. And so I was able to adjust a couple dials, ask them a couple questions, and presto, had the answer. And that that's what you need because you have no idea when risk or when change or something is going to come on, uh, come and present itself, and you want to make sure that you've got great data to make great decisions. Well, yeah, and it, it may also be that the financial plan is what helps you reframe the question and get the question right. Mm -hmm. You know, your question about, hey, can I afford to be done working? That was a right question, and you were able to provide a, a right answer. If someone were to come to you, Greg, and say, boy, uh, I've got $100,000 that I, I need to invest. Um, what, what's a good investment for this $100,000? That may not be the right question to be asking. If you don't have a comprehensive view and an accurate, up-to-date view of someone's financial life, you may be missing the fact that, no, $100,000, that, that shouldn't even be going into an investment. It, maybe it has a different purpose yeah, right. in mind. Maybe there's something better that could be done. So the reframing of the question is, hey, what's the most wise thing that I could do with this $100,000? And there, it's not just looking at the investment world. There may be some other things like paying down some debt or achieving a goal, checking a box off the list that's most important in your, in your financial life um, if you just reframe the question properly. And so you need to have someone in your financial life who knows your picture as well as you do, maybe even better than you do. And the way that you equip them with that is by having a clear picture at all times. And 
It's one of the things that we love so much about eMoney, and you've really mastered that software. And uh, I, I'm sure you've got stories all the time about people coming in with these types of questions, and you turn to your software to, uh, to help you answer. Yeah, and actually, I, I love this reframing, because so often in life, what we think we want is actually not what we want, right? Like marriage counseling or therapists are trying to get to this root of a problem. And that's one of the big things we don't spend enough time talking about as CFP professionals getting to the root of the problem. And, and so one of the stories I love to share with this pandemic, and, and talk about the, the workers that were hit hard, by the way. Let's talk about restaurant mm-hmm. workers. God oh, bless yeah. them. Uh, I mean, just, and they're still getting hurt. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, so we've got to say a prayer for them. But I had this person that came to me similar. It was not a teacher, one of my clients. And again, they had their planning money. So actually within the conversation, they asked the question. I was able to frame the, the answer in that meeting. But they said, you know, with all the things that are going on in the schools, we no longer want to have our child in public schools. We're thinking about private schools, but we're also thinking about homeschooling. Mm. And they wanted to know if they started working part-time, their salary went down, and they paid for that cost of K-6 through six and also K-12 through 12 of that homeschooling, or if they did private schooling, could they still successfully meet their goals? And when we looked at that, at first, the, the e-money is a probability of success, so it's red, yellow, green. Green, you're good, right? Yellow, slow down. Red's bad. It went from green down to red. But we said, you know what? What if you could just change your retirement goal and retire five years later? And that brought them to green. And so what the real question was, if I just push back my retirement goal and put my children's education ahead of my goal of not working, can I do that? Yeah. They knew what they wanted to do. They just didn't know they had the capability to do that. Mm -hmm. That is reframing the question because so often – if I meet somebody in public, that's what they want to know. They want to know about some investment and investing money. I'm like, well, do you even need to invest money? Right? I got to tell one other quick story about yeah. this. So I, I have a suit tailor, and um, not because I like fancy things or anything like that. It actually saves me money right? because <laughs> I used to buy these cheap suits, and they would fall apart, and I spent so much money. So I did all this research. I'm a researcher. So I ended up with a suit tailor. And so he's helping me uh, with, with a suit. And he told me, he goes, can you help my, uh, my daughter-in-law? She's really foolish with money. Yeah, I mean, I could help her. What's what's going on? He goes, well, and I, I felt kind of honored because there's a lot of financial planners who use this. And he was looking at me. He goes, she has all of her money in CDs. I said, okay. He's like, isn't that foolish? I said, I don't know. I don't know anything about her. And he said, well, you know, she's 35 years old and she has all her money in certificates and deposits. They don't earn a high interest rate of return. I said, well, what if she doesn't want to take on any risk? Like, if she's okay with the fact that her return's going to be lower, and therefore she has to save more than another person. Or work longer. Or, or work have longer. some supplemental income in retirement. Yeah, that's this her This might choice. be the right thing for her. Mm-hmm. There's no right fit. What's good for me is not necessarily good for you because we all, God designed each one of us completely uniquely. And so what I told him, I said, I'd love to meet with her. But the real question I think what you're asking is, can she be in the green to meet her goals and what's important in her life? And one last thing I talk about this reframing that's becoming so popular right now with generational shift. I don't plan to retire. Retirement is a four-letter word for me. I don't like retirement. And by the way, it's in my blood. My grandfather, I remember he was diagnosed with cancer, was told to be bedridden, and he had a trailer park, and he was out there. He was digging holes. Hmm. And my grandma was so mad at him, Cecil, you're going to die earlier. And he's like, I'm going to die happy. <laughs> and I think that's that, – but that, that's what – I'm not a workaholic – But I don't want to retire. So why do we have to define retirement? So maybe retirement is spending more time volunteering at the church. Maybe retirement is, for me, I can tell you what it is, I want to take tours of Deep Creek Lake on a boat. You can come on my boat, pay me money, and I'll take you a tour and tell you the history, or I want to be an usher at PNC Park. That's retirement. And that's what that, with with financial planners, Hmm. reframing it, because people are trained by our society. And this traditional retirement is fairly new. It started in Germany back in the 1800s. It's a new thing. Mm-hmm. That we're going to do this, so reframing it is what we need to do, and I think that's what that e-money tool really does for us. It, it does two things, in my opinion. One, it organizes clients' lives, and two, it helps people to make informed decisions. They're all making decisions every day. The yeah. time to get up, right? And so, what what trade offs do you need to make if something all of a sudden becomes a higher priority or a new goal? What adjustments do you need to make? What trade offs? That's exactly right. Now, so let's let's go to this next one. In 2008, in 2009, clients would come in to see us at Corhorn Financial Group. And I remember, you know, no one was particularly you know, happy with the, their financial situation at that time. But a lot of times people would say, oh, well, I guess that retirement goal is out the window. 
And it's purely just, well, let's 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 take a look. Okay, you were planning on retiring at 65. Well, if the market doesn't come back, could you retire at 67? Yeah, I think I could do that. Well, then you're still on track. You were planning on retiring and spending six grand a month. Well, if the market doesn't come back, could you, you know, if you wanted to still retire at the same time, could you spend five grand a month? Yeah, I think I could do that. It's all about the trade-offs. So right now, the market hasn't had a fantastic year. We know that's going to happen. And the probability and the possibility of that is built into our financial plans. So Greg, curious, as you're sitting down with clients and, you know, their confidence rate that their plan would work was in the green and now it's maybe low green or yellow, are you making big adjustments? How are you talking to clients about that probability, that confidence um, during the shaky market? That's a, a great question. And honestly, we're not making a lot of changes because a financial plan is that for most of our clients, now some of our clients do have a shorter plan and short things and we're making changes. But if it's a long-term strategic plan, what we've seen in the markets isn't anything out of the ordinary. It's what we see. And the plan had already, and part of why we use Monte Carlo, probability success, it's already accounted for that. And we stress test our clients' portfolios for what we call a three sigma market event. Uh, and by the way, not all of our clients have their money invested in the market, right? We do financial plan for clients that maybe own a business, right? Yeah, so there, there's a little bit of difference there of how your money is invested for you. But I think that the key thing here is, and the one I get a lot now, it's not so much the markets because people have been through that, right? If you've invested money, there's some people. The one I get is inflation, right? Are you adjusting your inflation assumptions? Because we've seen, as you mentioned earlier in the show, 40 yeah. year high in inflation. And what I say is no, because this isn't anything, it's 40 years, not all-time historic high. This stuff happens, doesn't happen often. And part of what we've done in our software is we've already said that inflation over time. So a few years ago, people would come into my office, I would tell them the inflation assumption, a reason by it, you're too high. Yep. And now everyone's telling me I'm too low. Everything hmm. reverts back to the mean, right? <laughs> yeah. The average, if it's raining five days in a row, we just we were at the lake this weekend, and one of the kids on Friday was raining. So he woke up Saturday morning, he goes, "It's we can't go on the boat, it's going to rain. I'm like, why? He's like, it's been raining all night. Well, it's going to change. Like, the sun's going to come out. It's not going to rain forever. But if it's raining now, we think it's going to rain forever. Yeah, that is what makes that. That's the reason why we've survived as a species. But that's also what makes us horrible investors yep. is because we take what the, the present is and project it forward. So if it's an up day in the stock market, like the stock market's on tear, yep. I can't lose. And if it's a down day, you say, well, of course it's a down day. I can tell you the 14 problems that exist in the world that would cause the stock market to go down. And the only thing that can happen from here on out is it goes down. I would I would say that the big idea here is making sure that, number one, and we're going to tell you this every single show, make sure that you're working with a certified financial planner, but make sure that that CFP is doing comprehensive financial planning, that seven-step process Greg talked about, and working through all six areas of your financial life. Um, and yeah, check with these litmus tests. Hopefully they're using a financial planning software as a way to organize and keep your financial life decisionable at all times. Greg, appreciate you being on the program. For anyone that wants to learn a little bit more about Greg, where can they find you? What's a handle for you? Absolutely. The best way to get a hold of me is LinkedIn. I'm a power user on LinkedIn. I always joke around and say, people, you can text message me or send me a message on LinkedIn. I'll probably get back to you faster on LinkedIn uh, just because I can filter stuff through. So you can look me up, Greg Fuhrer, mm -hmm. F-U-R-E-R, -E on LinkedIn, or you can always get a hold of us on our company's website, Baratung Advisors. That's B E R A. T-U-N-G advisors, but it's a pleasure and an honor to be here, and hopefully I can connect with some of you that found us valuable. All right. That's all the time we have for today. I'm behalf of Corhorn Financial Group, Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregg, and myself, all of us at KFG. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Joint business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated. Greg Fears, a financial advisor with LPL Financial. Security and advisors offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA and SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Baritone Advisors and LPL are not affiliated.